Hey YouTube, this is Brian here. This is going to be my top 10 favorite TV characters. Uh, only TV, no movie characters. Uh, that's for a separate list. So, uh, those with uh, animated characters who will also probably get their own list. Uh, spoiler alert warning. Uh, uh, I might reveal some of my favorite scenes uh, with these characters in them. So, if you don't want to hear any spoilers, uh, maybe don't watch this video. Uh, okay, number 10 on here. Obviously, uh, you know how my lists go, no particular order. Uh, uh, number 10 on here is going to be Herman Munster, played by the very talented Fred Gwynn. Uh, he's the patriarch of the Munster family on the short-lived cult classic 1960s series, uh, The Munsters. Uh, it's kind of a little bit of a ripoff of the Adams family, but I think it has a little bit more heart and a little bit more um, originality. It seems like uh, uh, the characters end up more well developed and stuff. I, I, I just think it has a little bit more uh, friendly spirit than the Adams family does. Okay, number 10, or sorry, number 9 on here is going to be Al Bundy uh, from Married with Children, uh, played by Ed O'Neill. Uh, he was a former high school football player that's now become like a 45-year-old chauvinistic D-bag with a, a disrespectful family that doesn't take him seriously. Um, you know, his wife is uh, a resentful of the fact that she's a housewife. And his kids um, think he's an asshole, um, which he is. And uh, I think the his jokes are worth putting up with his douchebaggery, uh, frankly. Uh, it's always funny when he makes fun of the neighbors like Marcy's hair or like uh, the, when she's still married to Steve. Um, uh, his manliness or whatever. Uh, next up on this list, number eight, is going to be Fez from that 70s show, uh, played by Wilmer Valderrama. Uh, I almost feel like he embodied the spirit of those early teen years uh, better than the other actors. Uh, it was strange watching him mature to become a ladies' man later on. It's obvious they were trying to fill that Kelso slot after he... Uh, left in the later seasons uh, by buffing out Fez and having him act uh, a little bit more aggressive towards women instead of acting kind of, frankly, kind of like a horny 14-year-old. Uh, uh, um, despite the later seasons of the show trailing off a bit quality-wise, I think Fez was still a memorable character that added a needed bit of diversity to the show culturally. It would have been kind of boring otherwise if it was just six uh, kids from the Midwest and they um, didn't have any friend to add a little bit of perspective or a little bit of flavor to that, you know? Um, anyways, uh, number seven on here is going to be Carlton Banks, uh, played by Alfonso Riviera sorry, Alfonso Ribeiro uh, on one of the quintessential 1990s sitcoms, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, uh, of course, starring Will Smith. Uh, he was playing the spoiled uh, rich prissy guy that was kind of opposite uh, Will Smith's relaxed and cool vibe. Uh, he was the perfect side man, really. I think that uh, uh, considering Will was uh, moving in from the ghetto, this was a a really good juxtaposition between, uh, the, you know, Will kind of representing that street smart, do what you need to survive, um, you know, kind of, like I said, relaxed, laid back vibe uh, versus, um, you know, this guy having come from a very ordered family, you know, everything was set up and there was a lot of rules. So, um, yeah, it just kind of, it's a good juxtaposition, like I said. Uh, next up is another sideman character. Jason Alexander uh, uh, played uh, the most developed character, arguably, on the best sitcom ever, and that's Seinfeld. He played George Costanza. My favorite scene with him is when he turns purple and yells, I'm an eggplant, Jerry. 
I think his spastic explanations were a good pairing with the dry and low energy Jerry Seinfeld. Uh, it's kind of like a uh, cream, you know, when Clapton was a little bit zoned out. Um, they had the other two. They had Ginger Baker and Jack Bruce providing the energy in the band, you know. And it was a similar vibe here, you know, in terms of George kind of providing the energy um, when Seinfeld was a little bit uh, mute or boring or just kind of low energy in general. Uh, number five on here is going to be uh, a more reoccurring character, but he actually ends up being in every episode of the show I'm about to mention. And that's the janitor, played by Neil Flynn on Scrubs. He torments Zach Braff's character, uh, J.D., throughout the show, with almost uh, it acting as an initiation into the hospital uh, with all the mean pranks and meddling in his business. He has no reason to really haze him so harshly, uh, but he ends up acting as an older brother in a weird way. At the end of season eight, uh, spoiler alert warning, the janitor's real name is actually revealed to be uh, Glenn Matthews, though they actually just really refer to him as the janitor throughout the whole show, uh, whether it be uh, the interns or the actual people who work at the hospital like Dr. Cox. Uh, number four on here is going to be Andy Griffith, played by the same actor on his eponymous TV show. Uh, I think that this show is the embodiment of old-time family morality. It had an air of innocence, and yet it had firmly established ethics and beliefs. Today, things are more about sardonic, dry sense of humor, quick, uh, you know, quips and, and wit, and being about as mean or gross as the censors will allow, you know. And that's kind of sad that this, uh, the former type of humor, the Andy Griffith type of humor, isn't really around anymore. That kind of innocence has kind of almost died, and that's, that's sad in my opinion. Uh, number three is uh, a character from a more serious show, and that's going to be Boyd Crowder, played by Walton Goggins on uh, Justified. Uh, I think that he's a darker character that helps add the necessary tone to a more dramatic show. The acting on the show has received numerous awards, including two primetime Emmys. Uh, the primary villain uh, opposite... Uh, sorry... He acts as the primary villain opposite uh, Timothy Oliphant's deputy Raylan Gibbons. And he actually kind of functions almost like the Joker does to Batman, like the psychotic version of the Joker does to Batman. Uh, this show actually has a lot of awesome uh, villains on here, including Mags Bennett um, and her sons. Uh, so yeah, definitely check this show out if you're looking uh, for uh, something like that. If you're looking for a superhero having a good good challenge in front of them, I would definitely look at this uh, because Raylan does not have it easy. He has a lot of villains to deal with. Uh, number two on here is switching tones drastically, uh, and that's going to be mentioning Gilligan as number two on this list, played by Bob Denver on the 1960s TV show uh, Gilligan's Island. I think he's the archetypal bumbling idiot who means well. Uh, he's a very influential character because numerous ones have come along over the years that follow those basic outlines laid by Denver so many years ago. Uh, number one on my list is going to be Charlie Kelly, played by Charlie Day, on the classic dark comedy It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. He plays the least intelligent yet most well-intentioned member of the group, and he's often taken advantage of by the gang, you know, like particularly Dennis, who's probably the most evil of anyone in that group. Um, and his stupidity nearly always gets them into trouble, too. Uh, my favorite scene with Charlie is probably when he takes steroids and eats a foot-long sandwich as fast as possible. Um, he's like crying and having mood swings. It's, uh, it's really, really funny. You should try to find that on YouTube and watch that. It's hilarious. Anyways, uh, thank you for watching. 
Uh, I've been wanting to do this for a while, and I'll probably do those other related videos involving animated characters and stuff, uh, uh, probably within the next week, I would say. Uh, so thank you for watching. I love you guys. I'm out.